All right. So we learned how to handle if then else statements in our last video. Now we're going to learn something completely new. I'm going to delete the text we've been working on so it'll be more, much less cluttered. And now I'm going to create a dictionary. A dictionary is sort of what you might think. If you're familiar with other languages, it's probably exactly what you think. So we're going to say my dict, D I C T, colon equals dictionary new. And instead of just doing it, we're going to inspect it. So I'm inspecting it. I'll show you that. That will automatically evaluate or do that line of text and inspect the result at the same time. And sure enough, you can see we have a dictionary. It's of type dictionary. It has two variables in it. One is tally, which is zero currently, and one is an array, which contains nothing. So let's go down a line. Notice I've already added some text down here. We're going to say my dictionary at my dictionary at George Washington put February 22nd, 1732. And now we're going to evaluate it. And now looky over here, we see we now have George Washington and a little arrow pointing to February 2nd, 22nd, 1732, which happens to be his birthday. So actually, if we wanted, we could just rename things, but I'm not going to right now. Um, second one is going to be John Adams. Well, let's do something interesting. I haven't done this before, but it should work. Remember, an inspector window is actually live, so you can manipulate the contents of your object from within this window. So let's say self, which re refers to the object the inspector window is inspecting self at John Adams put October 30th 1735 and evaluate it with a, a do it sure enough magically appears the name John Adams and his birthday so we can continue likely, likewise over here. Now let's do it slightly different again. My dictionary at Thomas Jefferson put period and now select the entire thing and do it and sure enough we now have Thomas Jefferson now let's do it slightly differently again you notice that one line could be broken up many ways as long as we evaluated it selected it first and then did the do it so let's do it a final way at James Madison put oops, March 16th, 1751 and instead of a period I'm putting a semicolon. What does this do? Well, now let's do at 
surround the text with quotes. Put. Surround the text with quotes. Period. Let's stretch this out so you can see. All right, so my dictionary at James Madison put. You know what that would do. But what does the semicolon do? Well, let's see what happens when I select everything I just typed and do it. And sure enough, it adds a James Madison reference and a James Monroe reference. The semicolon is called a cascade or indicates a cascade. What it means is I'm not finished. So this next bit of code that's coming in, think of it as another message to the last object I was dealing with, which was my dictionary. So my dictionary gets the at put message and then another at put message. And then the period says go ahead and evaluate the whole thing. So these two different messages, at put and at put, got sent to the same object one after another. Cool, huh? It means that you can create all sorts of interesting things without having to say, my object do this, my object do this, my object do this, which is, you know, convenient. Okay, so suppose we want to know what the birthday of George Washington actually was. Well, let's say my dictionary my dick at George Washington. And then print it just so you can see what's going to come out. And sure enough, it finds the entry with the key. This first part before the arrow is called the key and the second part is called a value. So you can get to values by typing in keys and that's probably enough for now.